Okay, so for this one, to find the implied range of that stated measurement. I'm going to go through the whole process. The first thing we can find from this is the degree of precision. What is the degree of precision of this measuring device, of this ruler? Remember, it's equal to the smallest division. Sixteenth of an inch. Very good. From that, then, what is the possible error in each measurement due to the measuring device? Plus or minus a thirty-second of an inch. So if our stated measurement is two and three eighths, the range is going to be two and three eighths minus a thirty-second to two and three eighths plus a thirty-second. So one of the things I'll have to do is change three eighths to thirty seconds. How many thirty seconds is that going to be? Eight times four, so three times four makes twelve, right? So this is going to be 12 minus 1 is 11 30 seconds. So 2 and 11 30 seconds of an inch. 2, 12 30 seconds plus 1 would be 13 30 seconds of an inch. So 2 and 13 30 seconds. Okay, now, any questions on that? We've talked about the measuring devices a little bit. We've looked at pictures of rulers like this. So today we're going to talk about another type of measuring device that's a little more precise than a ruler. It's called a caliper. And a caliper actually has a few different ways it can be used for measurement. <coughs> Let me pull up a picture here. My caliper in the room here seems to have walked off on me, so... Let's see, I'm going to use this one here as a good picture of a caliper. On this, this picture here, you can see at least two of the three ways that the caliper is used to measure. Um, the first way, the main way, is the main jaws right here. Um, whatever is in between those jaws, you tighten it down, and you can read the measurement off of it. The second way is these little teeth up here. Those teeth, here, let me do this. Yep, they're going the wrong way, and let me show you why. <coughs> Pull up this simulator, is probably a little bit better picture of it. Okay, so here we go. You can see they're going the wrong way. These jaws here are tight together when it's closed. And as you open it, the space in between it gets bigger and you tighten it down on whatever you're trying to measure. These jaws up here slide past each other as you open it. Those are for measuring inside of a hole. So if you put that inside of, in, or inside of any measurement, you put that inside and you pull it open until it hits tight. And that reads how far it is from here to here on the inside of a space. Then the third type of measurement that these calipers take is a depth. You can see this little piece here that slides out as we move it out. That's a depth gauge. So you can set the edge of the caliper here on the edge of a hole or on the edge of any sort of a drop-off and pull that down to the tip of that that touches bottom and that will measure the depth. Whatever reads here is the depth. Because when this is closed, that is exactly even to the end of this. So that's the three different ways that a caliper can be used to do a measurement. So now we have to figure out how to read a caliper. Oh, I circled the wrong way? Well, no, like this, the thing is open, but those are not Yeah, you're right. They should be facing against each other. I want to flick that in all of them. No, that one's right. Yeah, that's the only one that's the wrong way. They are the wrong way. They should be facing away from each other, shouldn't they? Good catch. That one's right. Huh. Interesting. I hadn't caught that before. Cool. <coughs> so anyway, um, let's go to reading these. 
These are standard micrometers, or standard calipers. When I do a standard caliper, there's two ways to tell. The first way to tell is there's two sets of numbers here. You can see the larger two than the one, two, three, four, five after it. The larger number is whole inches. So that is two whole inches is what that's saying. The smaller numbers are tenths. So this is two whole inches and two tenths. That's the 2.2 spot. Where we read that main scale depends on the style of caliper. For this caliper, it's at the edge of the jaw here. For different calipers, like these, this style here, it's not going to be at the edge of the jaw. It's going to be at this notch right there. Well, how do you know? Well, close the caliper tight and whatever lines up with zero, that's where you're going to read the main scale of your caliper. So this is, that's one way to tell that this is a standard caliper is because you have the two different size numbers on the main scale. Second way to tell is over here, this is numbered 0 to 100. And also it says 0 .001, often it'll say 0 .001 inch. But this is giving you thousands of an inch. If this were metric, that would only be numbered usually 0 through 50. Actually, I've got to be careful. I think the newer ones now are 0 through 100 now. <coughs> so anyway, but that would say 0 0.01 millimeters if it were metric. So this one's standard. So this is saying 2.5 is the last line it's passed there. So that's 2.5. And then on the dial, what number is the dial pointing to? 15. So that's 15,000. So 2.515 inches is what that's reading. So on this one, how many whole inches? Five whole inches is the last number we're past. How about tenths? 0.6. And then on the dial, 21. So 5.621 inches. Have you guys in auto used many of these in the shop yet? Have you gone over it yet? Okay. Well, then this would be a good little review for you. <clears throat> so this one is how many whole inches? 3.6, and then from the dial, 66, right? 3.666 inches. How about this one? It's 4. Is that 0. 0.9, though? We can see the 0. 0.9 there, but have we made it to it yet? No. How can we tell? Now we go to the dial here, it has not quite made it to zero yet, which means it's not quite to the next line yet. So it's not quite to the nine, so it's still 4.8, and then this is 87, so 4.887. This one, <coughs> whole inches, zero, right? Tenths, are we to the three? Two, very good. Not to the three because we're not quite back to zero. And then on the dial, 71. How about this one? Perfect. Four whole inches, four tenths, and then 43 on the dial. So 4.443 inches. This one, I want you to read it to yourself, and then we'll talk about it in just a few seconds. So how many whole inches? One. One whole inch. Tenths? One. One. And on the dial? Forty-two. Forty-two. Very good. Slightly different style caliper, but reads exactly the same way. We're just reading at the notch instead of the edge of the jaw now. Whole inches? Zero. Tenths? Five. Five. And on the dial? 63. This notch, it moves with the jaw. The bottom jaw. Down here. Of course, this is connected to the top jaw. It's all connected. I mean, this style up here, 
It's just the jaw wraps around both sides. The, it wraps around the whole thing. And this style here, it's open here and it wraps, it does wrap around down here, but it's, oh, there's just an open spot in it up here. <coughs> so this one is 0. Point... Is it past the 8? Yeah, because it just passed 0. So it just passed the mark there. 0. 0.8. 1, 4 inches. And this one? One point zero. You gotta remember the zero because it hasn't made it to the one yet. Off the dial. Forty-six. So one point zero four six. This one. One point two six one inches. This one. Okay. Yes, it has made it past the six because it just passed zero. And yes, it's 9 there, but we've got to put it as 0, 9, because this is thousands. And this one. Perfect. It's really close to the 9 there, but it has not made it to 0 yet. So it's 1.8 and then 96. <coughs> this one. Perfect, 2.137. And this one is the same one. How about this one? Careful. 2.4. Yep, hasn't quite made it to the 5 yet because you're not quite back to 0. Read this one in your notes. <coughs> What'd you get? 2.8. Don't know why that leaves one, right? This one? 3. Point, 3. 3.4. Good. That one you can probably get. 3.653. Good. This one's a little bit different style. If you look at it closely, what looks different about it? The dials and 64s, right? This is a cabinetry caliper. <coughs> you guys will probably never see one. I've seen very few of them in my life where you actually have the 64th of an inch on them. Um, off the main scale here, this does actually read down to a sixteenth, but why would you bother? This is one inch, and the sixty-fourths are on the dial here. This is one whole inch, and what I would usually do is I find a mark below it that I convert to sixty-fourths. So one eighth is eight sixty-fourths, right? And from there I count up. That's eight, so that's nine, ten, eleven. It's between ten and eleven sixty-fourths. Which one is it closer to? It's really close. I'm going with 10. We'll go with 10. So 10 64, which reduces to 5 30 seconds. So it's 1 and 5 30 seconds of an inch. How come they wouldn't on the dial and put it all in 30 seconds? All in 30 seconds or 64? Oh, yeah. It make it well, because when you reduce it, I mean, when you report a measurement, let's say you're measuring a bolt or whatever, and you're going to try to find what size wrench to put it on, it's not going to be. A 1064 wrench is going to be a 5 30 seconds wrench. I mean, yeah, it's, it's easier to reduce the fraction for most people than it is to, to count up like we have to here. But yeah, that's their justification. Is that's the size tool that they're going to use for it. So this one here has zero whole inches. I'm going to start from one half, which would be 32 64s. 33, 34. 35. It's between 34 and 35. Which one would you say it's closer to? 34. <coughs> I'd say maybe slightly closer to 35. It's really uh, tough. Down, it looks like it's closer to 34. We'll go with you. 
So 34 64 or 17 30 seconds of an inch. <coughs> What's this one read? Well, 5 16 16 times 4 is 64, so that's 20 64s. 21, 22. Which one's it's closest to? That's why I was asking. <laughs> 22 64s. So that's 11 30 seconds. Is that my measurement? Yeah. 1 in 11 30 seconds. So this is. 1 and 7 eighths. No need to convert that to 64. So it's right on 7 eighths. <coughs> Try this one on your own. I'll give you the two. I'd probably just start here. 32. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 39, right? 64s. Anybody have that? Good. I will not quiz you on these, but I just wanted to expose you to them so you saw. These you will get quizzed on. This is metric. One of the messed up things about metric is this is in centimeters. That's one centimeter, two centimeters, so on. This, however, is labeled 0 0.01 millimeters. So what we have to do is we have to convert these into millimeters. We usually read this as being 20, instead of two centimeters, as being 20 millimeters. So this is 21, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 25 millimeters. 30 have we passed the 30 mark, or are we still at 29? We've just passed zero, so we are at 30 point. What's it read over here? 31 millimeters. <coughs> so this one is 20, 1, 2, 3, not quite back to the 4. 23.96 millimeters. This one. Fifty two point four one millimeters. Very good. This one. Perfect. This is ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen point seventy seven millimeters. This one? Are we past the nine yet? Yes, we are. Nine point one, two millimeters. This one? Perfect. 62.48. 48, thank you. And this one? Sixty-seven point. Four seven, and this one. <coughs> Eighty-six point eight one. This one. Forty-six point five zero. Do we need to have the zero on the end? Yeah. Yes, because we have to tell everybody that. We did measure to the hundredth of a millimeter. It just happened to come up to close to 50. How about this one? Only 2.37 millimeters. This one? 28.28. And this one? Seven point six zero. If you guys want to take off, your homework's just gonna be do that packet that I set in front of you for the calipers. 
For you guys automotive, we're going to look at a few more. Yeah, you brought up digital. Um, did Rick, did you have a digital one in the shop that you're using? I was going to say, most digitals are very inaccurate. Yours is right on? How much did you spend on it? Chances are it won't be accurate for very long, or it's not very accurate. Um, to get a really accurate digital caliper, you got to spend like 250 or 300 bucks. <coughs> um, the thing, the the thing is, the more expensive ones do adjust slightly for temperature changes. Temperature changes really throw off the digital calipers and the digital micrometers. So you have to calibrate them often throughout the day. I mean, I don't know if you guys have gate. One of the ways to calibrate them is just to shut them down all the way down and hit the the Terry button and zero them out. Um, but if you're measuring something more than a couple inches long, you really should calibrate it close to what you're measuring. For example, if you're measuring something like three and a half or four inches long, they actually have precision gauge blocks that you can get that you can, they're exactly three inches. So what you really should do is put a three inch gauge block in there, close it down and zero it out. And then just add three inches to whatever your measurement says. I know it's a real pain, but the digital micrometers, they have to be, and I'm not talking about calibrating them once a week. I'm talking about few, three or four times a day they should be calibrated just to make sure they're precise. Otherwise, temperature changes really hit them. Now, a $100 one, they, they do have some that are like 45 or 50 bucks that you can get their digital. Um, they'd be better off measuring it with a piece of string. They're, they're horrible. The $100 ones, did you get, is it a Sterrett? Is it Sterrett or what brand? Okay. The, the $100 Sterrett's are actually pretty good as long as you keep them calorie. So zero them out. Every time you use it, you should zero it out, basically. That is, if you're measuring something bigger than three or four inches, then you might want to consider zeroing it out in a larger. Yeah. Well, for you guys, anything over an inch is really not, you're not going to measure too many things over an inch, unless you're measuring an engine bore. So anyway, looking at this one here, is this metric or standard? How can you tell it's standard? Two number scales here. There's a one and then one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, if I keep going, there's two. And also, I know it's a little small for you guys to see, but it says point zero zero one inches on here. I know from your seats that's tough to see. <laughs> this one does not allow me to magnify it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Now I can read it. What measurement is this saying? I don't know if it's better if it's under one or under two or three. Picky picky. How many whole inches? 1.518. Very good. You guys seem to be pretty good with those. This one, metric or standard? Metric, because there's only one set of numbers. If I zoom in, you can see the 0 0.01 millimeters. What's this one read? 35.75. 35.75. The biggest mistake that I get on this next quiz is people put the decimal point in the wrong spot. They'll put that on as 3.575, which if you labeled it centimeters would still be correct. But if you label it millimeters, it's, yeah, it should be 35.75 millimeters or 3.575 centimeters. But <coughs> I'm going to assume it's wrong. It's not labeled. Well, if you put down 35.75 without a label, I would accept it. 
What I wanted you guys to see are these. This is probably something you guys haven't seen before. Um, automotive kind of went away from these about 12, 15 years ago. Machining still has them. If you got into custom engine building, you might see them. This is a vernier caliper. This is what was used exclusively up until about 15 to 20 years ago. The dials just weren't very accurate. The mechanicals that went into them, the, the gears would get worn out and they wouldn't, wouldn't stay accurate for very long. This one here, so that's what they had used, was this is a vernier scale. Now the way you read this, the main scale reads exactly the same and you read the main scale at the zero of the vernier scale. Because when I close it down, you can see that zero lines up with the zero on the main scale. But the thing you'll notice is, between the one-tenth and the two-tenth, there's four little divisions. So this is point 0.1, this is point 0.125, point 0.150, point 0.175, and then point 0.2. Does that make sense? Then what's here is 0 through 25. So the way you would read this, right now this is one inch, three-tenths, point 0.2, and 25 thousandths. So this is 1.325 is what we're reading off the main scale here. I'm going to zoom in. So 1.325. Now on this vernier scale, you look to see which one is lined up. And right now, this one looks almost lined up. This one looks really close to lined up. The only way I've ever been able to read a vernier scale is I have to take the caliper or whatever it is I'm reading, I have to tilt it so I can look down the lines. And then you can see if there's just a little bit of a jog in them or if they're perfectly straight. It's the one that's perfectly straight. And here, I would say it is probably this one that is perfectly straight. Which is this, now we're reading these numbers up here. Now this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is 1.325 plus 14 thousandths. 1.325 plus 14 thousandths. 1.339 is what that reads. <laughs> the dials are way simpler to read, aren't they? What's this one saying? 1.625575. So 1.675 right now. Everybody see where the 1.675 come from? And then up here, which one lines up? All three of these appear to line up right here, don't they? So you take the middle one. When there's three that line up, you take the middle one. So it's five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight thousandths. So 1.683 inches. Does that make sense? The vernier ones are kind of a pain. I'll give you that. This one, metric or standard? This is metric. The nice thing about this is this reads pretty much like any other one. Now as I zoom in, however, <coughs> so here's the zero. This is 55, 6, not quite to the 7 yet, right? So this is 56 millimeters. The decimal is read on the vernier scale here. Which one's lining up? Well, it looks like these two here line up. I would say this is the one I'll take right here. This is not 9, though. It's 90. This is not 91. It's 92, 94. They'll go up by twos. So that is 56.94 is what that one is reading. If I zoom back in, come on. Usually it zooms in on the location of the. Well, I guess we're going to keep our thing over here somewhere. So, what's this one reading? 
60, one, two, three. We're past the four, so 64 point. What lines up here? That's very, yeah, that one. This one here, right before, that's the one. That would be 10, 64.10. Yeah. So how about this one? Yeah, just, just a touch. There. 58 point. This one looks like it lines up, sort of. No, not quite. Like these three here line up, so I'm going to take this one, right? Wow. So this is 4246, 46. So 58.46. What's that? Well, I may have done it a few times before. So this is 42. Point. How do I know where to look, by the way? Well, I look here. That zero is a little bit more than halfway between the 42 and the 43. So now I'm going to be looking at something a little bit above five. So I'm looking somewhere in here to find out what lines up. So one of these two here, I'd say. The 54 or the 56? The 56? So 42.56. We can double check your answer. You're right, 42.56. What do you think of that? Uh-huh. That doesn't really look like a point on that either. That was a, that was a comma. Um, this is a German applet. Um, well, most of your precision measuring devices are German made. Sterrett is a German company. Um, this applet, I can't remember where I got these applets from. This is from, uh, I don't remember right now. I don't know what it says on here anywhere. Stefanali is where these are from. And in Europe, they don't use a decimal point, they use a comma. So it can be confusing. Well, for you guys, I have a packet. For you guys to work on on calipers so i'll hand that out now and i'll let you guys get to work on it you really should be able to fly through it